Ladies and gentlemen, here, everywhere, online, around the world, outer space, I'm Franz. And on behalf of everybody at Tesla, welcome to We Robot. Just want to thank Warner Brothers for hosting us here. As you know, this is the birthplace of many epic films, many of them depicting a vision of the future. We're here tonight to experience that future that is closer than you think. And who better than Elon, right, to show us that future? So it looks like Elon's on his way, so let's welcome him up here. Welcome to the Wii Robot Party. So we, we, have, uh, we have quite a show for you tonight. I think, uh, I think you're going to like it. As you can see, I just uh, arrived in the RoboTaxi, the CyberCab. There's uh, 20 more where that came from. So they've been traveling. They're all, there's no people in them, as you can see. The car's just going by with no people. And we have, uh, we have 50 fully autonomous cars here tonight. Uh, so you'll see Model Ys and the Cyber Cab, uh, all driverless. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to take a ride in the Cyber Cab. There's no steering wheel or pedals, so I hope this goes well. <laughs> you, you see a lot of uh, sci-fi movies where uh, the future is, is dark and dismal, where uh, it's not a future you want to be in. <laughs> So, you know, like, I, I love Blade Runner, but uh, I don't know if we want that future. I think we want that, uh, that duster he's wearing, but, uh, but, but, not, but not the, uh, the bleak apocalypse. Uh, we want to have a fun, exciting future that if you could look in a crystal ball and see the future, you'd be like, yes, I wish I could be there now. That's what we want. So... So when we think about transport today, there's a lot of kind of pain that we take for granted that we think is normal. Um, like having to <laughs> drive around LA uh, in like three hours of traffic. Um, yeah, and for people that live in LA, I mean, you know, try to get from uh, Pasadena to, you know, El Segundo during rush hour. is like, you can fly to, you know, another city faster than you can get to cross town LA. So, and you have to drive the whole way. Uh, unless you're in a Tesla, of course. Our Tesla already uh, does quite well at this, uh, you know, supervised self-driving. So supervised for self, full self-driving is actually working quite well. For, I'm sure there's people in the crowd, you, you're using that, uh, yeah? So it, we'll move from supervised full self-driving to uns, unsupervised full self-driving, where the car, you could, you could fall asleep and wake up at your destination. 
but there's also a challenge uh, for a lot of people that uh, cars cost too much. I mean, when you factor in everything that goes into a car and the car insurance and the car payments and the storage of the car, it's, uh, it's very expensive. So with, uh, and, and you said like how often are, what, how many hours a week are cars used? Your average passenger car is only used about 10 hours a week out of 100, 168 hours. So the vast majority of the time, cars are just doing nothing. But if they're autonomous, they could be used, I don't know, five times more, maybe, maybe 10 times more. So you could actually, for the, the same car, would have five times as much value, maybe, maybe 10 times as much value. It's, it's, there's 100, 168 hours in the week, and like I said, only 10 of them are used for driving. So, and, then, and then a bunch of those hours are looking for a parking spot, which is, you know, can be pretty annoying at times. So, so we want, with, with autonomy, you get, you get your time back. This is a very big deal. So it's, it's not just a save, like, it'll, it'll save lives, like a lot of lives, um, and prevent injuries. I, I think we'll see autonomous cars become 10 times safer than a human. Um, and, and it's not just the lives saved in injuries, but if you look at the, think about the cumulative time that people spend in a car, and the time that they will get back, that they can now spend, well, I guess, on their phones, <laughs> or, or, or watching a movie, uh, or doing work, or whatever you want to do. Um, you can think of the, the car in an autonomous world as being like just a, a, a little lounge. You're just sitting in, in a comfortable little lounge, and you can do whatever you want while you're in this comfortable little lounge. And when you get out, you will be at your destination. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So, so in, in fact, we, we, I think the, the cost of autonomous transport will be so low that you can think of it like individualized mass transit. Um, the, like the average cost of, of a bus per mile for a city, um, not, not the ticket price because that is subsidized, but the average price is about a dollar a mile. Whereas the, the cost of a uh, cyber cab, uh, we, we think probably over time, from a, the operating cost is probably going to be around 20 cents a mile. Um, and price, including taxes and, and everything else, probably ends up being 30 or 40 cents a mile. So, yes, and you will be able to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, we, we expect the cost to be below $30,000. And I think there'll be an interesting, um, you know, business model where, like, let's say somebody is an, uh, you know, Uber or Lyft driver today, uh, it, they, where they can actually sort of manage a fleet of cars, and like a sort of manage, I don't know, 10, 20 cars, and just sort of, you know, take care of them like a like a shepherd uh, tends their flock. You have a little your flock of cars, and you're the shepherd, and you take care of your flock of cars. I think that'll be pretty cool. It's, I think it's going, to be a, it's going to be a glorious future. It's going to be really something special. We, we do expect actually to, st to start a fully autonomous, uh, unsupervised FSD uh, in Texas and California next year. And that, that's obviously, that's with the Model 3 and Model Y. And then we, we, we expect to be in production with the, the Cyber Cab, that, which is really, um, highly optimized for autonomous transport uh, in probably, well, I tend to be a little optimistic with time frames, um, but, but in, tw in, in 2026, before 2027, let me put it that way. And uh, we'll make this, this vehicle in very high volume, and, um, but well before that, you will, you will experience the, uh, a robotic taxi via the Model 3 and Model Y program, and Model S and X too. Uh, but uh, the, the model, the, the th your three and Y will be, uh, will achieve uh, unsupervised full self-driving um, with, with permission in where, wherever regulators essentially approve it in the U.S. and then to, and then to follow in uh, outside the U.S. So, and it's Cybertruck too, yes, of course, sorry, I don't want to be, yes, 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 all our cars, uh, basically, um, all cars. The computer can be so much better than a person is that we have millions of cars that are training uh, in, on driving. So it's like, 
It's like living millions of lives simultaneously and seeing very unusual situations that a person in their entire lifetime would not see. But <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah, exactly. So, it's, it's, so with, with that amount of training data, it's obviously going to be much better than what a human could be because um, you can't live a million lives. Um, and it's also, it can see in all directions simultaneously, and it doesn't get tired or, or text or any of those things. So uh, it will naturally be, like, like I said, uh, 10, 20, 30 times safer than a human, just um, for all those reasons. Um, and and, and I, I want to emphasize that the, the solution that we have is, is AI and vision. So there's no um, expensive equipment needed. So the, the Model 3 and Model Y and SNX that we make today will be capable of full autonomy unsupervised. Um, and, and that means that our cost of producing the vehicle is, is low. Um, now, we, we are going to actually overspec the computer for the cyber cab. Uh, so our, our AI5 computer um, will be somewhat overspec. And uh, because I think there's actually also an opportunity, sort of like an Amazon Web Services, where if the car is driving for 50, for 50 hours a week, there's still over 100 hours left. And it, it, there's a potential there to have a massive amount of distributed inference compute, where if you've got, like, say, a fleet of 100 million vehicles and a kilowatt of efficient inference compute, you have 100 gigawatts of, of compute, which is really quite substantial. If it's there, you might as well use it. So our autonomous future is, is here. Um, as I said, we've got 50 Teslas driving autonomously. Um, we're trying to give you a sense of what, what cities will be like in the future. And uh, when, you, when you get in, you'll see like it's really quite a wild experience to just be in a car with no steering wheel, no pedals, no controls, and it feels great. Um, so, and we, you know, we have enough vehicles here, so everyone should be able to, to try it out and uh, experience the, the, the set that we've built here. Um, it's a very big set, so it's like really, we've, we've used, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 acres or something like that. It's really big. So it's, it goes on, it, the ride's long. <laughs> um, and we, 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 set it up, we set it up to feel like a, like a ride, like a park ride. So it'll be, it'll be cool, uh, and you'll get to experience it tonight. Something we're also doing is, uh, and it's really high time we did this, is uh, inductive charging. So the rubber taxi has no plug. It, it just uh, goes over the inductive charger and charges. So, yeah. It's kind of how it should be. One of the things that like, is really interesting is, is how will this affect this, the cities that we live in? And when, when you drive around a city, or when the car drives you around a city, you'll see there's, like, there's a lot of parking lots. There's, there's parking lots everywhere. Parking garages. Uh, there are, and, and so what would happen if you have an autonomous world is that you can now turn parking lots into parks. So like, that would be quite fantastic. Oh, and uh, also, what, 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 what happens if you need a vehicle that uh, is bigger than a Model Y? The, the Robovan. The Robovan is, uh, this is, a, we, we're going to make this, and it's going to look like that. Now, can you imagine going down the streets and you see this coming towards you? That'd be sick. So this can, this can carry up to 20 people, and it can also uh, transport goods. So you can configure it for goods transport within a city, uh, or transport of up to 20 people at a time. So this is going <laughs> to... The Robovan is what's going to solve for high density. So if you, if you want to take a sports team somewhere, or um, you're looking to, to really uh, get uh, the cost of travel down to, I don't know, 5, 10 cents a mile, then you can use the Robovan. Some people call it the Robovan, but... Uh... <laughs> so, yeah.
Um, you know, one of the things that we, we want to do, and you've seen this with the Cybertruck, is we want to change the, the look of the roads. You know, the future should look like the future. Speaking of robots, so everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques, it's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of down. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really going to have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so you could have your own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. And I think at scale, the, the, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction, long term. Now, you know, it'll take us a minute to get to the long term, but, um, but fundamentally at scale, uh, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for I think probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars long term. So, and, and and what can it do? It can it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids. It can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, um, whatever you can think of, it will do. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Because I think everyone of the 8 billion people of Earth, I think everyone's going to want their Optimus buddy. And there's going to be some, maybe two. Uh, and then they'll be, they'll be producing products and services. I, I predict, actually, provided we address risks of digital superintelligence, 80% uh, probability, probability of good, a good outcome. <laughs> Look on the bright side. Um, the cup is 80% full. Um, the, uh, the cost of products and services will decline dramatically. And basically, anyone will be able to have any products and services they, they want. It will be an age of abundance, the likes of which people have not, almost no one has envisioned. It will be something special. Now, one of the things we wanted to show tonight was uh, that Optimus is not a canned video. It's not walled off. The Optimus robots will walk among you. Please, please be nice to the Optimus robots. They'll serve drinks at the bar. And uh, you'll directly, exp I mean, that's just, it's, it's a wild experience just to have humanoid robots and it, it's, they're there, they're just in front of you. Uh, so, yeah, with that, um, let's party!